Today we're working on our Evinrude 115 uh, water pump and cooling system. And what happened was we got into a real shallow sandbar area which had a lot of soupy, shelly sand in it. And while our water pressure gauge used to run you know, somewhere in this vicinity right here, after going through the sandbar area, our water pressure actually went way up to bury the gauge. So what that was telling us was that there was something you know, in the system that was causing a blockage where it was not allowing the water to freely discharge out the exhaust. So we're going to take the thermostats apart and see if we can find our problem possibly with the spring-loaded bypasses. So let's get to work. All right on out of there. And there's what she looks like. This bypass, which is one of those spring-loaded bypasses, actually has some crud stuck right there in the side of it. So we're gonna have to use a screwdriver, see if we can pry this thing, you know, out of the hole. Okay, let's see what we find when we pull this out of here. There we go. So look at all that mess there, you know, that was causing this thing, you know, not to be able to release the pressure off that water pump. So this is some of the trash that came out of the water bypasses when we pulled them out and started cleaning them up. Let's go ahead and separate this plastic part off of the housing and See what we end up with here. So you can see, boy, that's quite a mess there. So this is definitely the root of our water pressure issue. And surprisingly, you know, the heat sensor never set off a overheat alarm, even with the amount of mess that's in this thing. Look how this thermostat, the one side of it actually broken off. And there's a piece of Permatex, which was probably from when we did the water pump, you know, a couple few years ago. Uh, the second thermostat, it's got the same issue where it's actually broken off you know, right there at the side also. I need about 60 seconds of your time. I'll be right back. After which I'm going to give you some real detail on how the water flows through this system and considerations for water blockage as well as access to get these thermostats out of this motor. I need about 60 seconds of your time to check to see if you need any eternal repair. You probably think to yourself, eternal repair? What's that? Well, let me pose a question to you. Are you a good person? And I'm sure many of you out there watching this video right now, you're probably really nice folks, okay? Let's put the same question against God's standard, the Ten Commandments, okay? One of the commandments says, thou shalt not lie. And I'm sure if you're honest with yourself at some point in your life, you've told at least one small lie before. We all have, I have too, okay? Another one of the commandments says, thou shalt not steal. And I'm sure if you're honest with yourself again, at some point in your life, even no matter how small it was, you've probably stolen some small item, okay? Those rules define what sin is, okay? And if you broke even one of those rules, such as lying and stealing, that means you've sinned. We all have, okay? There isn't anybody that hasn't. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The punishment for sin is going to hell or eternal separation from God. But the good news is that Jesus Christ came. He took a brutal beating on the cross. He was sacrificed on the cross, went to the grave. Three days later, he arose, and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross is he was taking the punishment for my sin and for your sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was and what he did and you repent, okay? For the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Many of you out there right now are thinking, hey, I'm a good person. For all the good deeds I've done, surely God would look favorable on me on Judgment Day and not send me to hell. But the truth of the matter is the Bible says that by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. There is no amount of work that you can do to earn your way to heaven. The Bible says your most righteous deeds are like filthy rags before the Father. The only way to find eternity in heaven with God is through putting your trust and faith in what Jesus did for you on the cross. Recognize that he paid the price for your sin personally. Now let's get back to our job, and I'll have a little bit more information on this at the end of the video for you. For the purposes of this video, we're going to skip removing this jacket that houses these thermostats, and for more detailed information and decisions on whether you should cut your cowling or not, go watch my other video called Removing the Thermostats on a 1995 Edmund Rude 115. The one thing I want to make you aware of is the way the water flows through these motors, as it comes up through the water pump, it goes into the back of this bubble back, you know, first, you know, or if you don't have the bubble back, the back portion, and 
the P water indicator to show you that your water pump is working comes off of this bubble back or back plate. So that hose comes off of it right here, comes around the block, and it exits right down here on the bottom. If these thermostats are plugged up or the bypasses are plugged up, the water will still come out this P hole indicator and it is not an indication that your engine is cooling. After the water passes through this bubble back, then it goes into the heads and travels around through there, coming out the bottom of the head through these hoses. Then it comes into this thermostat casing. So the water is coming in this direction. And so your spring-loaded your spring loaded pieces right here with these plugs, the water is coming down on top of them. And so the spring is able to compress and allow water to bypass it in the event that the thermostat is malfunctioned. And in that situation, if you have a thermostat malfunction and you have a bunch of crud plugging these up, then you're not even going to be able to cool your motor, even though you have water still coming out the pee hole. Here's a water flow diagram from the 1995 Evinrude service manual. And you can pause this and study it if you want to see how it works. Another thing you'll find when you're working on these, you have this rubber uh, bypass ground on the left, you know, has swelled up. And this one on the right, which I just replaced with a new rubber grommet, you know, uh, is not swelled. And what effectively happens is that when the spring-loaded bypasses, you know, are loaded in there, they can actually get stuck because of the swelling. So watch here where I take the bypass, which would have the spring on the back of it, and I'll stick it into the new one I just installed. And I can lift it right back up out of the hole, and there's nothing that's restricting it. Now I'm going to stick it into the one that I have not replaced the rubber grommet. And look how... It gets stuck to the extent that the spring probably wouldn't even be able to push that backwards out of the hole. So this can also cause you know high water pressure issues you know on your gauge and your dash. The rubber grommets are easy to replace. You just push them out like that, and you can just push the new one right back in the hole like that. That's it. Another thing to be careful of when taking these bolts out is if you do end up having to put some heat to it, which will be further up here where my thumb is, this one piece right here is actually made of plastic. So you definitely don't want to put the torch to that because it could damage it. I've got a couple pages here from the 1995 Emmerud Johnson V4 service manual that maybe are helpful to you. When reassembling, it says here to torque your nuts to 60 to 84 inch pounds. So here we go. It doesn't hurt to replace these hoses if you've never done it before. And I've actually had both of these hoses spring a leak, you know, on this motor. As far as the eternal portion I was talking about, if you're not sure who God is and if he really exists, I encourage you to pray like this. Say, God, if you are real, if you are out there, I pray that you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that kind of prayer, he's going to answer you and he's going to show you exactly who he is. And at that point, you will know he's real. At the point in time you know he's real and you're ready to accept what Christ has done for you and know that you have eternal salvation with him in heaven, the gospel is so simple. You just pray like this. You say, Lord, I acknowledge that I've sinned and I've fallen short of your glory. I know that you have paid a price for my personal sin on the cross. I know you are the Son of God and that you were resurrected and taken my place on that cross. And I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. That's how simple it is. But here's the catch. Just saying those words doesn't do a thing for you unless the heart believes the words you're saying. For the gospel says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe that God raised him from the dead, the believing part is where salvation is. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. So anyways, I appreciate you watching. If you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com. That's eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot of other interesting repair ideas and also some more information on your walk with Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching. God bless and have a good day.